Welcome to lecture 14, Python Lag Yet for Calculator Design, Chapter 10A, Interpreter Design. We are using Python Lag Yet, Pre, as a tool. So objective, we will over, provide the overlook of the Python Pre, uh, the Python Lag and Yet, and talk about lecture theory, build a lecture with pre lecture, and then yet theory and build a parser with pre yet. Okay, and finally discuss the design issue for interpreter design for calculator language. Overview. Uh, first, let's know. Uh, let's look at what is pre. It's a Python lag yet. Okay, Python lag yet. And what is Python lag yet? We already know about the lag and ex tool, the Python and the, the uh, flex tool. So basically you can design the regular expression and then use a lex tool and Windows version is called flex tool and generate your, uh, your, your lexer. Okay. And then you can design your Contact free grammar and then use the yet tool. And yet tool in Windows is called Python. And you can design the so called parser. Okay, and yet may also provide the table for the next uh, lexical analysis tool. So here you may have a language input. Okay. And then you combine the parser and the, the lexer, and you may have the table, simple table. And you, you can design a uh, the so-called interpreter and compiler. So today we are going to talk about uh, the Python version of the lex and ex. Okay, but in fact these two are become two modules. So basically, you can put your regular, regular expression into Python language and content free grammar also into Python language. So these two portion actually is part of uh, the, the lexer and the uh, parser. And lexer and parser in Python, you can directly import it from pre uh, module. So you basically are uh, using some data structure to connect with the lexer and Parser together, you should be able to build a, uh, a, a, a interpreter in a very short time. It's even easier than the Flex and Python in the Windows version for C++. So here it is talking about a version of the uh, Lex and Yet in the Python, and it's compatible with the Python language. So you can just write some uh, pro Python program to, uh, to connect with it. And the current version requires Python 3.6 or newer. Mm -hmm. and there are some historical uh, release. So Pre is a pure Python implementation or compiler construction tool for Lex and Yet. The main goal of Pre is to stay fairly faithful to the way in which traditional Lex and Yet tool work. And Lex and Yet, we uh, call it compiler compiler. It's compiler compiler. It is a compiler for compiler design. We call it compiler compiler. And this uh, pre, pre version actually is not a compiler compiler. It actually is a compiler module. You can look at it in this way. It actually is a Python compiler module. So you can incorporate your compiler module from pre uh, module and put in your rule in Python and that module directly can be used as a compiler right away in your Python domain. Okay, so that's the purpose of having that. Thus you will use it in another language and it should be relatively straightforward to use Print. okay? So introduction, the early version of Print was developed uh, to the support the introduction of compiler course at the uh, University of Chicago. Since Print was primarily developed as an instruction instructional uh, tool, you'll find it fairly picky 
about token and grammar tool. Okay, so here actually uh, is the original point. Okay, in this part, the edit the formality is meant to catch common programming mistake made by novice users. However, advanced users will also find such a feature to be useful when building complicated grammar for real uh, programming languages. So here I would say uh, pre tool is a good uh, prototyping tool before you really use a C, C++ to build a full blown uh, compiler for a certain new language. And pre is a good language uh, uh, to help you to uh, experiment the compilation in a Python domain. So you should be also be noted that pre does not provide such apply much in the way of the bell and whistle uh, okay for the basic construction of the tree nor would i consider to be a passing framework so it's not a passing framework. so it's basically just a module you can make it portable to uh, create some compiler and in a very short time okay okay the rest of the document assuming that you are somewhat familiar with the passing series so basically we already finished the next uh, series and also the passing series. Now we, it's a good time for us to study left and yet uh, in Python domain. Okay, so there's a book for it. There's a book for you. You can study for it. But before you come for, come uh, come consulting the book here, there's a website you can look at. Uh, this one is the police site. Okay, so this one uh, is the website that you can look at. Okay, the pre Okay, it's a version 3.1. And here it has some introduction. Okay, here it has some introduction. And at the lower portion, okay, at the lower portion, uh, it do have some interesting uh, a portion. You can look at it, okay? <clears throat> and to install the tool, you need to use a pip install print, okay? And this one in uh, lecture, 10 or 11, we already introduced how to install this pre 3.11 uh, version. Okay, it is a L L A L R passing. Okay, uh, algorithm. So you can download. After you download, you will get the pre module. You will get the pre module. So in your application, in your application, you just uh, you just import it. You just import pre. Okay, uh, pre has a, a next. You can actually import it, okay, the, the lexer portion, but pre is the module, there is a lexer, you can actually directly import and write the language over here. We are going to discuss this one, okay? We're going to discuss this one. So let's go back to the slides. Let's go back to the slides. Okay, so, uh, pre overview. So print overview, print has two module. Uh, it's a print lex and print yet, okay, two portion. Both of which are found in Python package complete. So you have the print that lex and print that yet, okay. So lex module, lex that py module is used to break input text into a collection of tokens uh, specified by a collection of regular expression and uh, yet the PY is used to recognize the language syntax that have been specified in the form of uh, the content free grammar. Okay, uh, the two tools are meant to work together. Specifically, let the PY provide a uh, interface to produce token. Yet the PY use this retrieve token and the invoke grammar to rule. So basically, the outcome of the yet is open. Uh, abstract syntax tree, okay? So however, it's entirely up to the user. So basically these are the two things. And if desired, yet can also be used to implement a simple one pass compiler. So yet by itself can be used independently. So like Unix counterpart, the uh, the, the next and yet, okay, the compiler compiler, yet the PY provide most of the feature you expect, including intensive, uh, error checking, grammar validations, pull for empty production, uh, error tokens, and uh, ambiguity res resolution via persistence rule. In fact, almost everything that is possible in traditional year 
should be supported by police. Okay, so this is the version, uh, current support for the police. So it's very powerful, except that because it's written in Python, so a little bit slower than the C version, okay. The primary difference between EAC and Unix EAC is that EAC the PYT invokes separate code generation process, so it will not build a separate C module for you to build uh, and incorporate into your C code. Okay, so it actually purely just a module is directly plugging into your own program. Instead, pre reliable reflection, introspection to build, lecture, and parser. Okay, so unlike traditional lack and EAC, which requires special input file that is converted to separate source file, the spec specification given to uh, pre are uh, many Python programs, so it directly will give you that. This means that there's no extra source file, nor is there a special compiler step. Okay, so by just incorporate those uh, module into your program, it will work. So section two, next. So next.py is used to tokenize the input string. For example, uh, suppose you are writing the programming languages such as this, okay? And you will tokenize as x equals three plus 42 times parentheses s minus t and then parentheses. So x is actually a id, so it's a id equals, it actually equals three is a number, okay? Plus is a plus sign. 42 is a number, time, this one's time, that parenthesis is, uh, S is another ID, minus is actually a minus sign, T actually is a another ID, okay, and right parenthesis, okay. So here are token type and the tokens. So basically the goal of this lecture is breaking down this uh, uh, statement into tokens and also uh, the so-called uh, breaking down it into the tokens and also uh, the the token type. Okay, so in the middle is token, lower is a token type. Okay, so we break it down into the tuples of token and token type. Okay, so token type, token, token type, token, token type, token. Okay, something like that. This is actually the purpose of this uh, pre uh, next uh, py. So the following example show the next the PY is used to write a simple tokenizer. So let's look at it. This one's called calculator the next the PY. Okay. So the token, okay, so you need to create a data structure called tokens. Okay, it's a list of tokens. So these are the token type. Put the token type over here. Okay. So the number, number has its own rule over here. So basically, these are the so-called uh ID type or the non-terminal type you define in the tokens, okay? So here, remember that you had a percentage type, percentage type in your Python or in your frac, right? So then you put your regular expression. So regular expression is put over here, okay? A plus sign, single plus sign, okay? This one, you need to have the escape sequence. So this one, it actually will give you a plus type, okay? Plus type token. So basically that's the trust type token generated. So here is a single simple uh, tokens. It's put down here. Each of the token generation tool is starting with the T, okay, token, and then a rule underline T, okay, this is the variable name. And the right-hand side is it's a regular expression. But remember that in our uh, frax, uh, this is a percent, after percentage design, percentage design, okay, your regular, regular expression is put over here. Okay, and the XGM print is put on the right side, but here is different, okay, here is different. So this different one just generate the token type, okay. And then and then you have the number type. So number type is not included in this one. And the number type actually, you see here, it actually is a function, okay, it can be a function. So number type is a function and the function directly will keep you, uh, regular expression over here. So this one, when you put a, a, a string over here, you become the so-called underline, underline dark variable would get this one. So if you're okay, this one actually, it won't uh, actually uh, wrong it. It actually become a document string, but that document string, 
the compiler, the index will be able to get it. So that's the regular expansion rule. So basically, if you have action print, put your action print on the right, okay? So you have a return value called T over there. It will be evaluated your T the value converted. It actually is a string. So T is a symbol. So here you have T number, okay, T number is a token. This token, uh, this token is actually it meet the rule over here. The value of that token uh, would be T that value uh, converted in integer and that would be the value. And then you return your token there. And T actually each token would have a type, okay? And the value, okay, remember that. And the value right here is evaluated by, by this, okay, by this, by, by the integer of the value. <clears throat> so that actually is the number, okay, is the number talk about here. So if you have the change line mark, uh, the, the number of the lesser, okay, that line number, the line number will increase by the length of the token. So here, one or more change line mark, it will actually add the line number, okay, and space and the best slash t will be t ignore. This character will be ignored. Okay, this character will be ignored. It won't be used. So this is a t ignore rule will ignore all the data that's not related. So right here, as you can see, we are writing down the language with the valid uh, tokens and token with value, and also uh, something will be ignored. Other token will be considered to be illegal. Uh, uh, illegal uh, characters, okay? It will print out illegal, and the next uh, that skip one, so that later will be reported, that later will be reported, okay? So remember that if you have this T error, a lot of uh, error will be uh, will be included. So remember that many symbol you should add into your regular expression and the evaluation rule, and the new line mark over here, and the token ignore is over here, okay? And some other symbol will be ignored. Now, this one define the rule for next. So this portion is your, uh, the so-called equivalent to the, the previous one. We have the next.l uh, file. So that L file is up to here, up to here. And remember that we actually will compile it. Okay, uh, the next file is over here. And then we will compile it. Uh, we will run the next uh, or flex to generate the to generate the, that C file, but here we don't. Here we directly use a next that next to create a lexer. So this one is actually a creation of lexer. It based on these different rules. Okay, so it actually is just a function call, just a function call, and then we can test it. Okay, we can test it, and here the data is four plus uh, three plus four times twenty. Okay plus minus 20 times two. Okay, so this one actually, this one actually is an uh, expression. This one actually is an expression. This one is an expression. And then uh, you get, you prepare it, uh, the input and you put onto your uh, uh, input. And you will do lexer and you tokenize it until you uh, finish it, okay? Until you finish it. So that stream being put, and then uh, you will actually uh, call the lock. So this is next that token. Every time you retrieve one token, and if it's not a token, if you finish the file, you break, you get out. Otherwise, you print the token. So it actually is just. Uh, get token and get out, get token and take out. So each token will be generated. And token, we say that it actually is a tuple. So you print out a lexer token and then number, okay, number is a type, okay. And then the token is actually three, okay. Three and two and one, two actually is line number and position. So line number is the line two position, uh, position one and plus sign is line two and position three, okay, and uh, four is line two, position five, that is just a number. So here is the tokenization result, okay, that's the tokenization. So let's also support iteration uh, protocol. So you can write the above loop as the following. You can actually from there, 
you can you do not need to write it this way. You actually can write a for loop, and then each token you just print it, and it's nicer than uh, using this break rule. Okay, so you can also do that. Okay, and <clears throat> why a tokenization? Okay, why a tokenization? Uh, you actually can well two. You can this. You can also print the token type value and the token line number and uh, this uh, uh, next uh, uh, position. So this is the top of we actually look at here. Okay. Okay. So that actually is the simple example. So that actually before we go away, let's run this program. Okay. Let's run this program. Let's actually get the terminal, okay? So right here, that's actually, this one is called uh, calculator.py, okay? So here, let's do okay, uh, Python, okay? And then calculator.py, okay? And you get such result, okay? And it prepare to be the data over here. It prepared to be the data over here. So the data actually, it's not, it's not, uh, what is the data is actually pre prepared. So let's actually create another one. So let's call uh, calculator, okay, uh, Alex, okay, to the PY. So let's actually create this one, second one. So this uh, second version of a calculator, okay, let's actually uh, do copy of it, okay, copy of it. So right here, we actually just copy and put into this calculator too, okay? So we don't want to use the while loop like this, okay? So I copy the tokenization over here, okay? And I'm gonna put it over here. So you start to do tokenization. So here we actually uh, would get the token. So I'm going to, here you have a tokenization function, okay? So let's go back, go back to our slides. So right here, you say that you can uh, run it by the lexer. Okay, the lexer, you will get the token. So lexer, we will get the token. Uh, lexer has the input, okay? And lexer, the token, you get the token. Every time you get a token, okay, you get a token. So here, that's actually coming out the whole thing right here, okay? Coming out the whole thing right here, okay? So it actually, uh, every time you will do tokenization, tokenization will each time create token after token using the while loop, okay? Until you actually, uh, until it's uh, actually what? Uh, until it's not token. So token is uh, zero, okay? Uh, if not a token, if, if you don't have a token, you get out, okay? So here, this one is a for loop, okay? Uh, if you get a token, you print it, okay? You, if you take a token, you print it. So that's actually right here, we write this uh, tokenization part. So let's use the for loop, so for token indexer, okay, so indexer, just print the token, okay, using this one instead of, using the one we had before, okay? Instead of using the, this, uh, this look, let's actually try one more time, okay? So this one, we save it, okay? And right here, let's do this, okay? Let's do Python, okay? Python and then kill, kill uh, calculator, okay, let's, okay? Uh, right here, let's do calculator, let's do the py, okay? and we will still get the same result. Okay, we will still get the same result. So here, your lexer, your lexer will generate a sequence of the token. So this is a token function, every time get a token. Okay, but it actually is a generator. So every time you will actually create a token and print token you know, until it's done. Okay, until it's actually done. So use this one, it's a simpler way to do tokenization. Okay, to, to do tokenization. So until it actually is done, you will finish that, okay? That's actually think about it this way. We have the input as a data in this way, okay, in this way. So that data actually is what? Uh, that data actually is being, uh, being uh, a prepared already. So that actually already been prepared. So that's actually 
we will get the data and do next uh, and get the results. So this portion we can merge together, okay? Uh, we can actually merge together. So get some input. So let's cut this one and put it over here. You basically have a data and you enter the data and create token. So this portion, we already know it, okay? So this, let's actually prepare a data, okay? So here we actually will start to have the reprint uh, format. Okay, so let's do reprint. So now here let's have a down equals uh, force. Okay, let's have the down equal force. Okay, so here while okay, uh, not down. Okay, so so let's do this one. Okay, while well, not down. Okay. So we we are going to check it uh, since are down. Okay, so here we would have. Uh, what uh, line, line would be equals uh, the input, okay? And this input will get, uh, this input will be what? This input will be uh, what? You create a uh, prompt, okay? You create a prompt, you create a prompt and the prompt you'll get a line, okay? You'll get a line. And the line we will prepare you for data. Okay, we'll prepare you for data. So right here, we can have this one. So here, if, okay, so here actually, let's do this one while, okay. Uh, a lower of the line, okay. Uh, and actually this one actually equal, okay. I'm starting the line. Line, it should convert it to uh, lower, convert it to lower case, okay and not equals uh, exit, okay? Not equals, uh, actually, while it's not equal exit, we'll do this, okay? We will actually get this one and we will do it, okay? So if in there, we will actually what? Do uh, data equals the uh, line, okay? Equal line, okay? That uh, actually uh, strip, okay? We strip out the unnecessary uh, letters, Okay, and that's a single line. That's a single line. And actually right here, we do not need to have the thumb. Okay, this data, we don't need them. Okay, we don't need them. And then we keep doing that. We actually send it to token and we finish the token. Okay, and right here, we finish that token. We will actually uh, do this. We will read, read in the token one more time to the line. We will read the line one more time. Okay, we'll write the really line one more time. So right here, we will put in uh, a change line mark. Okay, so this one is our calculator number two. Okay, so right here, let's do this one. Let's draw Python calculator language section number two, the PY. So we got a prompt. Okay, so here I have one plus three. So print now the token, that is, right? I would have, uh, a plus four times parenthesis is two plus three, that is, okay. So A is an illegal uh, uh, character, okay. A is illegal character. So let's actually go back to here, okay. So back here, we only have a number of time. We do not have the ID yet. So A is illegal later, so it actually, Reporting the illegal later, actually is fine, okay, it's fine. So right here, we get exit, we will get out of the loop. So that actually is fine, okay. So here, let me actually add a extra space to the prompt, okay, to make uh, it look better. Let's actually try one more time, let's actually save, okay, save all. So right here, we do not need to have this uh, token anymore, let's actually delete it, okay. So right here, this is our second version of it, become the reprint format, okay? Become the reprint format. So that actually had the uh, Python, okay? Calculator, okay, next uh, number two, the PY, and run it. So here we have process one plus two times uh, two plus four, okay? Times 10 plus one, okay, and we run it. Okay, we get the tokenized in the right way. Okay, so this portion just show you how this one can be easily done uh, for the tokenization. Okay, let's change a different way to look at this one. This one is actually a calculator. Okay, this one is actually a calculator. So 
Here, let's actually try a different one. Let's consider that we have a language called monkey language. So it's a monkey language, we get this, okay? So let's actually copy one by one. So here from the calculator, I'm going to uh, import this uh, print directly to my monkey language, okay? So here I have this monkey language with the, this one. Second one, I'm going to copy the tokens. So this token actually copy here, I'm going to put it over here, okay? So here the token, I would only have number, okay? And then here I would have symbol, okay? I have symbol, okay? And I will also have a uh, third type, okay? It actually is uh, string. That's it. That's it. This is three uh, data type, okay? Only this uh, three data type. And then let's actually continue this uh, token. So I have the token, so token is fine. Now next portion is that I'm going to get this uh, different uh, uh, rule in to my monkey language. Okay, so this is a monkey language. We only have these three type. Okay, so right here, this one, let me use a capital, okay? So it's capital string. So here I would have my key number. So key number, I will do evaluation and return it, okay? So plus sign, whatever this one, I do not need to have, uh, I keep one new word, it should good enough. So here I would have T string. Okay, T string, I would have the set of the string, okay, it actually is A to G and the A to G, okay. This different one actually are uh, actually string, okay. These are the string. Uh, and this one, uh, one or uh, more, okay, one or more, one or more, we call it a T-string, okay. Uh, T-string is one or more of these. And we may also have zero to nine, okay, zero to nine. If it's a group of word like this, we call it a T-string, okay. And, okay, I'm sorry, here actually should be, this okay, but the leading later, leading later, we should have a uh, a to g okay, and the a to g. This one should be actually uh, at least this one, at least one of these okay, at least one of the leading later should be this. We call it a, a stream okay, at least one is is a, a id okay, a id, but I call it. Let me change it okay, let's don't call it stream, let's call it id okay. Uh, let's call it ID. So this one is ID, okay, this one is ID. Okay, ID is in this format, okay. Simple, okay, simple, actually, uh, we have simple and number, okay, we have simple and number. So let's define the number duo is over here, okay. Number duo is actually one digit or more, okay, one digit or more, only one digit or more, we call it uh, a number, okay. So simple, actually, uh, simple, okay. We have a simple, next one, we have simple, okay. Uh, simple, we do, so change the amount, we still continue to uh, change the number, okay. So here we should have a T of the simple, okay. Simple, okay. So simple would be actually uh, equal to R, okay. So this is a simple, we uh, should be sum of the later, that's not, uh, not zero to nine and also not the, the so-called uh, ID, okay? So here we should have A to G, okay, A to G, okay? Uh, here we should have, uh, <clears throat> uh, we should have capital A to G, okay? And also we should have uh, zero to nine, okay? If, if some of the data is like this, and this one, we actually do have just one, okay? Every single uh, later in this range, okay? And not in this range, we consider them to be a sim simple, okay? We consider this one is a simple. So basically we have that one, and new line is the same. Ignore, we have this one is actually backslash T is also ignore, okay, space is ignore, okay. 
and then uh, these are these, okay? Okay, that's actually, that's about it. Okay, that's about it. And we actually, uh, if the token is not uh, okay, and we will give you the T error, okay? We'll give you the T error, it's no match. Okay, no match, we will give you that error. Now let's go back to here. So here I'm going to, build an Alexa and then uh, get the, my repeat ready. Okay, so here, this one, let me put it over here. So this one is a monkey language tokenizer, okay. So this is a monkey language, uh, actually it's over here. Okay, so monkey language, pretty simple the monkey language. I'm sorry. Okay. So here, let me actually save it. Okay. Save all. So here, let's do Python. Okay. And then uh, monkey language the py, we run it. Okay. So here, let's try this one A, B, C, D, E. Okay. Whatever. One, 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 one plus two times uh, 200.22554, okay? So you see, this one is a, a ID, okay? And this one plus sign is a single symbol. And two is a number, time is a symbol, 2000 is a number, that is a symbol, okay? 2244 is actually a number. So that's why you see the monkey language can be constructed in such a short time. Okay, now the reason why I demonstrate this one is that this print will be very useful, very powerful, very easy, even much easier than the so-called uh, frag and Python to use. So it's just set up your tokens, your non-terminals, your non-terminals, and your regular expression uh, for that non-terminals, and your, your, uh, your, your regular expression for non-terminal with a return value with action plan, okay? And the new line mark and ignore and the error handling part, okay? If you are okay, you will be able to generate a pretty uh, uh, interesting uh, monkey language pretty soon, okay? Thank you and you can get out now, okay? So that you mm -hmm. can get out now. So this portion we have the next, uh, so let's look at the next one. We have the token, okay? We have the token. So let's look at the section three, the token. So token, token, we have actually the token list. All the server must provide a list of token that define all the possible token name that can be produced by the lexer. okay? The list is always required and is used to perform a variety of meditation check, okay? The token list is also used by the EFTA-PY module to identify the terminal. So here you have a token list. So we already show you uh, it is the, the non-terminal you want to uh, create, okay? The symbols you want to create. Uh, some of them are actually terminal, say numbers are terminal, okay? Symbol are terminal. But I call it just like, this is the token type, okay? Token type, okay, these are the token type. So then you can uh, actually call it uh, the regular expression. We say row string, row string means that you don't interpret it. So if you don't use a row string, then you need to have double slash to x plus one slash. So here you use the row string, it's actually better right here, okay? For the regular expression rule, you bypass the conversion from the, uh, the rule that require the uh, the escape sequence. Otherwise, your double, your single slash need to have two slash, a uh, two backslash. Okay, your backslash need to have that one. And here you have the number rule. Okay, that we talk about it already. So this portion is okay. So by default, okay, the name following the a T the prefix, okay, the prefix. So writing a function is used 
a lot of regular expression or speech by in the functions documentation stream. So that regular expression will you put there, the uh, the print will use it as your regular expression. Rule. The function always take, take single argument that is the token. Okay, that's the instance of the token, and the object uh, has attribute of a type which is token type. Okay, and there's a token type, and there's also a token value. Okay. Which uh, in which there is uh, uh, let's me okay let's me H U text uh, matched okay so that there is a pointer okay there's a value is actually value actually is the text me and line number you will have a line number okay and also the position okay so it is a line and then position uh, to it okay position to it that is a line and column okay line and column. So there is something that will be returned, okay? So internally, next, the PY use the module to do the pattern matching. Uh, patterns are compiled using the RE that propose break, which can be used to help with ability. However, be aware that unscaped white space is ignored and the comments are allowed in this mode. So, so far comments are allowed right now, okay? If you are, uh, pattern in bulk white space, okay? You make you make sure you use a slash uh, S, otherwise the you, your space will be ignored. If you need to match the sharp sign, uh, use the, uh, this one, break it sharp and break it, okay? When, come, when building the master regular expression, do or edit in the following way, okay? All token defined by the function are added in the same order as they are, appear in the next file, okay? So we change your rule need to be very first, you need to have it, okay? So you must follow, the, the function must follow the token order, okay? The rule must follow. So here, uh, plus is plus minus, minus times time, device, device, left, right, branches, a number should be the first function you use, okay? So you should follow the order of the tokens should follow the order of the tokens, okay? And that's that. Okay, tokens are defined by string, are uh, added to the next thing next by sorting them in the order of discretion, uh, regular expression length, okay? Longer expression are added first, okay? This actually is the rule, okay? Longer expression will be matched first and Without this ordering, it can be difficult to correctly match certain type of token. For example, if you want to have separate tokens such as equals and double equal sign, a uh, longer one is checked first. So you would check double equal sign first instead of checking this one, okay? By uh, sorting regular expression in the order of decreasing length, this problem can be solved, okay? So that's the, the rule you need to follow. For function, the order can be explicitly controlled since the rule appear first and uh, check first. The rule appear first and check first. And if it match, it will be returned, okay? So remember the first rule will be checked first, okay? So they are reserved word, okay? You have if them else, okay? To handle the reserved words, you should write a single rule to match the identifier. So here you have, uh, if then you match the I, I have a, a token, okay. Those are, those are reserved words. So basically you have a tokens and then you will add your reserved words uh, value, okay. The value actually will be added. Uh, the value is this portion, it will be uh, safe, okay. Then your ID, your ID actually is this, okay, the one that I just shown a moment ago. Uh, this is your ID's rule, okay, so check for the ID. So uh, reserve word, okay, that T, that value. So you tuple, okay, and get your reserve word, okay, and reserve word, okay, get the reserve word and ID, okay, check if, uh, if there, it actually is an ID. So if it is actually inside the reserve word, okay, if it is inside the reserve word, then it will return none, okay? Type will return none, okay? Type will return none. Otherwise, it will return ID, okay? Otherwise, it will return ID. So it's checking for the ID type. So we add one more with the ID, okay? And then T, 
four is the for loop, so that is the token for four. T print is the print, okay, so we get that. So here we actually add more ID and the reserve words uh, tokens, okay? So in here we get more, and you can have a command, okay? Command, you actually basically sharp that uh, word. So anything after the sharp, uh, up the sharp side, and then that uh, star that actually do nothing that later will be discarded, okay? And you can also put it into the so-called uh, ignore comment, okay? Ignore comment, this is another way you can use to, to discard the uh, same line uh, tokens, okay? Same line tokens, okay? Uh, before we go into the section four, the next uh, design issues, let me do one thing, okay? Because here I'm trying to explain it, but I'm, I somehow actually put my design, my newer design in the lecture example. So here, if later uh, you try to look at the download code, you do not have the you do not have the so-called uh, code in there. So I'm going to put it create a new directory. Okay, I'm going to put it in a new directory. Uh, under my under the my, the demo code, so I'm going to create, put into the demo code. So here I'm going to create a demo fourteen. Okay, I'm going to uh, create a demo fourteen. Okay, so this one let me name it demo fourteen. So when you download the new code, you should download it from the in class demo code. Okay, so right here, let me quit my Visual Studio code. Okay. We my video studio code. So here I'm going to say everything and I'm going to quit my video studio code. I'm going to copy my calculator too, okay? And my monkey language into the demo 14, okay? So remember these are the in-class demo code. This one are the uh, lectures uh, uh, demo code, okay? So these are uh, lectures uh, simple code. So in that way, you have two different files you can download instead of uh, looking into the, the lecture 14's uh, sample code, but did not see my monkey and calculator too. So I separated the two files. Thank you for the patience. Let me actually continue, okay? Let me continue. So next one, we are going into the next uh, design issue, section four. So in this section four, uh, number nine number and the position information. So here we, uh, by default, let's say the PY know nothing about the nine number. This is because the let's say the PY does not know anything about uh, what constitute a line of input, okay? Uh, for example, a uh, new line uh, character or even the input textual data. To validate this one, we write a rule called T new line. So T new line actually will add the line number. Okay, we have that, we know that already. And then next, uh, next the PY does not perform any kind of automatic column checking. So you can also check the column. However, it does not recall a positional information related to each token in the next post attribute. Using this, it is uh, possible to commute, uh, co compute the column information as a separate step. For instance, just count the backward, how many uh, count backward until you reach a new line. So basically you can find column, okay, column, and then you actually have the input and the token. Okay, so line star equals input that R find, okay, R find, finding the right side, basically n, Okay, and your zero and token that left post, okay, plus one, okay, and you can use this one to compute the, uh, the column, okay. So since a column information is openly used in the context of error handling, uh, usually you need that to report which row and which column have the error. Calculating the column position can be performed uh, when needed as opposed to do it for each token. Know that you are passing a language where white space matters, okay? Uh, it's probable, probably better match white space 
as a token instead of ignoring it, okay? So the spatial T ignore rule is reserved by uh, next to PY. So T ignore is a rule that you actually will bypass the character that should be completely ignored in the industry. Usually this is used to skip over white spaces and non-essential characters. Although it's possible to define regular expression rule for the white spaces and something like that to similar to line number, new line mark, okay? The use of T ignore provides substantially better lexic performance because it handles as a spatial case and it check in a much more efficient manner, okay? Okay, the character, okay, this one, uh, the character given in the T ignore are not ignore when such character are a part of the regular expression. So regular expression will be matched first and then uh, and then you will go to T ignore if no rule will match, okay? For example, if you have a rule that capture quote, quoted text, the pattern can include the ignore character, okay? Uh, the main purpose of the T ignore is to ignore white spaces and padding between the tokens, okay? So literal, literal characters, so uh, literal character can be specified as defined as this, okay? So you have literal plus minus time and uh, slash, or literal equals such a string, okay? Literal character is single character that is written as it is. So you can actually group those literal, and before that, we do not have that, okay? We do not use the literal because we use the plus equals and uh, minus, then you will use more tokens. So you can now even uh, group them into uh, what? Into literals. So literal character is a single characters that is returned as is when encountered by the next literals are checked after all defined regular expression rule. Uh, alas, if the rule uh, start with one of the literal, you always take precedence. So uh, then you can uh, actually use that to take precedence. So you can have a plus sign, minus sign inside a token without being captured as a token, a, a plus sign or minus sign. When the literal tokens is returned, also the type and value is set to the character itself, okay? So, we can have the literal with the left right uh, curly braces, okay? So we do return that as the tag, we return that as the tag. Okay, error handling. Error handling is a error handling. It's a value will be shown into here and then the lexer will uh, skip by one token, okay? And end of file, end of file is a T end of file. It actually will start the, uh, let's see, let's see, uh, tokenization, okay? It will start the uh, tokenization. So we would use the for loop that Lexer will stop, okay? It actually use the TNO file or check in the end of file, okay? So sometimes you may want to have the end of file and continue for multiple file to continue the passing, okay? To continue the passing, but uh, the main use of this function is to provide more input to lexer so you continue the pass. So in case that you want to uh, have end of file and you still want to continue until uh, there's no more uh, file you can handle, then you may want to use this one, okay? So end of file should return the next available token, okay? Uh, now you could indicate that there's no more data. Be aware that setting more input with a self that next input means uh, that not reset it. There's a state and the line number attribute used for position checking. The next position attribute is reset to be aware of that if you are using it in error reporting, okay? Session five, building the texture. Session five, build the texture. So far we already look at a simple case to use the, uh, the, the pre lexer. Now we are going to look into different way of using the lexer. So to build a lexer, you use this function called lex.lex, okay? You will create a lexer. Uh, this function is using Python refraction or introspection to read the regular expression rule out of the calling context and build a lexer. Once the lexer has been built, two methods can be used to control the lexer one. 
uh, one is the the input you can the input and the duck token you can get token or you use a for loop to return the next token using uh, it okay so here is getting the input and then the token so basically this one you have a dexter okay dexter and your data will be using the dexter the input to get the data so you put into the using input and output is using token function to take out token by token. Okay, take out token by token. And you can also use a for loop by the generator to generate it. So here, that, that's the way you can use it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here we can have a decorator called at the tokens decorator. Uh, in some application, you may want to define the token as a series of more complicated, complex with regulation uh, reg uh, regret, uh, regular expression rule. So here you have digit, non-digit, and ID rule, okay? ID rule, at least we talked about it already. And let's just look at the ID rule, okay? ID rule. So ID rule, want to touch string to identify a bar, okay? So uh, that's the ID rule. So you can use like, a token, okay? A token and the identifier, okay? So identifier actually, uh, you put that uh, doc, doc, uh, uh, at the token decorator, you will be able to uh, put that uh, regular spend rule into the document uh, string. Okay, so that's something you can use. That actually using the at tokens decorator for the next. Okay, so use use from print the next import token and token is a decorator. And you can set the debugging to be true for the purpose of debugging, you can set it to be true. This will produce various sort of debugging information, including all the edit rule, the master record expression by the lecture and token generating during the lesson. So this one is a debugging setting. And then you actually, in addition, uh, the next P will come with a simple main function which will either tokenize the input from standard input or from the file speech by a command line. To use this, okay, you can run it in a run main function. Okay, there's a run main function in the run and you can uh, get it from the standard input or from the command line, okay? So to please refer to a debugging. So there's something you can refer to, okay? so. Alternative specification of the lexer, a show in the example lexer are specified all within one Python module. So, so far, we have been using only one mode to do it. That is your, you have a file, put in your tokens over here, and then the regular expression rule over here, and build a parser, and then replete a rule, okay? So now you can split that into a token rule, uh, put in your token table and also the regression to over there. And then you actually can build the parser in a separate full world. Build the lexer and uh, replicate uh, in different module. That's something you can do. Okay, so that is a different way to use it. Okay, it's a different way to use it. So here we have a file called token rule. So you isolate those token rule in a different file called token rule. Okay, so this one is the same with the previous one. It's set up with a different file called token the py. So it's a module. So in your main module, you import the uh, print that legs as legs. Okay, and also import the token rule. So total rule is a module. So you uh you kind of uh, put the token rule. So this is somewhat like uh, you write in the by, uh, the, the so-called uh, flex file. So it's a dot L file fitting into the lexer. So using that to build a lexer, something like that, okay? But you can put it as a module. So after that, you've got a measure and you can build whatever you want to do over here, okay? You can do uh, whatever you want to do over here. And that is the wrong file. So let's look at this one. Okay, let's look at this one. Okay, look at this one first. So it will be under the, under the, let me show you. Okay, it will be in the 
next year fourteen uh, sample call, and there's a next year example there's a token rule. So you'll be under this token rule. Okay, under this token rule, you have one file call call uh, what the token rule. So it's actually similar that this there's a token rule. So you put your token rule in the uh, token rule module. Okay. Uh, token rule module, you put that portion, the front portion. Lower portion, you put into the wrong file. So it's a wrong file like this. So this one, with that, you can basically do Python and then wrong the py, okay? And you get the tokenization for three plus four, okay? Now let's actually change the folder to the, to the demo code, okay? To the demo code folder that I just put it a moment ago, let's go to the demo call. Go to the demo call uh, directly. So we have the monkey language, okay? We have a monkey language. So now in the demo call, let's look at the demo protein, okay? So then this one. Okay, we have the calculator two, okay? And we have the monkey language over here. That's actually right now, create a new file that's called uh, uh, monkey uh, rules. Okay, so that monkey rules.py. So monkey rules.py, let me actually copy the token. Okay, let me actually copy the token up to the rule portion. Okay, so this whole portion, let me copy to the monkey rules. Okay, this, this will be the monkey rules. So let me save it. Okay, and then let me create a new file that's called uh, wrong monkeys. Okay, wrong monkey that uh, wrong monkey that py. Okay, we have this a uh, wrong monkey, and I'm going to actually from the monkey, I will import the next. Okay, and then put into the wrong monkey. Okay, that's the first thing. I will also import the. Uh, monkey rules, okay, we call the monkey rule module. And then I'm going to get this uh, running portion over. So this one will be a monkey language put into the wrong monkey portion here. And we be your Alexa, but this method I will have module equals uh, monkey rules, okay. I will actually build my lecture based on the monkey rule. Monkey rule is in here. I group the monkey rule together, okay? And then I would have the reprint that I want. Okay, so this portion is the reprint console, okay? So let me save this one. That's my lab monkey language. Okay, my, my monkey language. And I let me save all, okay? Save. And let me put it on my terminal, okay? Uh, let me put it on my terminal, new terminal. So it's in demo 14. So here I will do Python wrong monkey.py. So here I should have uh, AAA A12, okay, plus 2222 two, 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 uh, B and then 2A. Y, B, okay, minus, 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 equation mark. Okay, so this one, we have A, 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 that's an ID, okay. We have A, 12, that's another ID. We have plus, that's a symbol. 2222 two, two, two is a number, okay. And then B, it will be a ID, okay. And then 2B, 5B, 2B, 5B, okay, 2 is a number, okay. Okay, so here you have a leading two, you actually got eaten by uh, by a number, okay? And B5B actually is a separate separate uh, ID, okay? And then your dash is a simple dash, a simple dash, a simple and information mark simple. So this will follow my monkey rule, but we actually separate the monkey rule into a module and then my reprint in a separate rule, okay, so a separate module. So this is the way that we can run it in two different modules for my monkey language, okay? So now let's continue to look into the next one. Next one, we have the 
class-based design. Okay, sometimes we have a module for the token rule, but we also may want to have my lecture as a module. Okay, instead of using the so-called uh, token rule. So we may have a module. So here you put your tokens and rule into a module. You need to import your Lex that as a Lex. Okay, so here you actually need to, what? I'm sorry. You need to uh, extend the object. Okay, this extend object in 3.0 is not necessary. Okay. And then you actually had a number rule. So this whole rule put into your uh, my my lexer, okay, my lexer. Okay, my lexer you put into there. And then you use a my lexer and then you build and then actually you do uh, my test. Okay, my test. And you generate the tokens, okay. So here you have a test. So here you need to, uh, in, the, in the file, okay. In the in the lecture, you need to add the bio bio function. You will actually what uh, send the module to cell. Okay, cell is adding this different rule into it. Okay, and then you have the dictionary over here. Okay, uh, if there's uh, some uh, argument, so here you have the argument here, and you do test. When you test, you will get the input data. Okay, so here you the test function is to uh, put your what? P test function is to put your uh, put your wrong function over here. So this one, you put it, it into a, a class, okay? So do will be loaded to the next using the B of function, okay? Uh, in the B of function, it is a assignment self. This is more important. The test portion is not as important, okay? So that test portion, you actually get the input and then you do well loop for it, okay? So that is not as important, okay? That's not, you can write it in different way for this one, okay? Uh, so that this one actually is a, a class-based design, okay? This is class-based design, okay? So when building a lecture from class, you should construct a lecture from, from an instance of the class, okay? And not a class object itself. This is because, okay, because print works properly if the lecture action are defined in bound method. Okay, uh, when using the module uh, option lex, print collects simple from the underlying addition uh, uh, object uh, using the dictionary function. Okay, there is no delay access to this uh, dictionary. Uh, of the module value, so you, okay. So here that is the class way, okay. Let's look at example for the class way before we go into the object design, okay. Object design is a separate design, okay. So let's look at the class-based design first. Let's look at our uh, monkey language again. So monkey language now would be actually have a, we have monkey, okay? So here, let's create one more. Uh, this one, let's call it actually monkey kin. Okay, so monkey kin, the py, let's actually uh, call it monkey kin, the py, okay? So here, let's have a, let's actually import, okay? Uh, print the less, okay? Uh, for, uh, actually, let's do this one, let's do one, okay? Uh, print that, I'm sorry, let's actually do import, okay? Print that next, okay, as next, okay, that we import it. So we build a class, so class, okay. Here, yeah, let's actually do uh, monkey, okay, monkey last, okay, let's build a monkey last. Let's don't put the object yet, okay, let's don't put the object yet. So here, let's actually go back to the, Slides, okay. So basically over there, you actually, over there, your class, okay, your class uh, do not have the, do not have the init function, okay. So you basically put your scenes into there. So that's actually put everything we have from the monkey rules, okay. So monkey rules that actually put the token and everything, okay. 
copy okay put into the put into the monkey king okay so right here that's it you put over here okay put it over here okay <clears throat> so here we actually need to uh for this different one we need to tap them okay we tap them <clears throat> so tap them we actually have the tokens okay and this token let's tap one more inside okay so these are what we have over here okay so that inside my class so here same thing here you you put your token and your rule inside your class okay you have different rule now you need to use a create a bill so let me have the bill and test copy the bill and test over okay so let's copy this bill and test over to my monkey uh next okay so let me put it over here okay let me put it over here. So you need to have bill. Okay, sorry for that. Uh, not problem here. We actually, let's rewrite it. Okay, let's rewrite it. I just want it for reference. So we did we define the bill function. Okay. And then we have a cell. Okay. And then comma, dollar, dollar, uh, key or documents. Okay. And then we do a uh, cell, the next cell. Okay. Next, the next, okay. Here we have module equals cell, okay. And then other data sign keyword argument, okay. So this one we finish this portion, we can delete it right away, okay. So next one it has a test, but I don't want to use test, okay. I don't want to do test. So here I will define something called run, okay. I would like to define something called run. So this wrong, I would wrong cell, okay? Wrong cell. And I'm going, I'm not going to use this one, okay? So here I'm going to actually call monkey uh, Lex, okay? And I'm going to build it, okay? Build, yes, I'm going to build it. So I'm going to do m dot build, yes. And I'm going to do m dot wrong, okay? I'm going to use this. So this whole thing, I'm going to delete it, okay? So here I have a wrong function and wrong function. I'm going to get it from the, the wrong monkey. Okay. Wrong monkey. I get this one. I build it already. So I'm going to copy this function, go to my monkey king over here. Okay. So put it over here, this one. And I tap this whole thing over. Okay. Tap this whole thing over. Okay. So here I don't have the next, so I need to wrong self the next okay and this one is self the next okay so self the next equal this one i create a uh this one just build a next next okay so so next uh, become a uh a instance available for the monkey duo okay so you have a wrong you actually uh get the data per line and do it okay so this portion we just delete them we don't need that okay and this portion we build the lecture and draw. Okay, so this is the main function we get. Okay, this is the main function we get. So do I hear that we save it? Okay, save all. And this one, let's don't call it monkey kid. Let's actually rename it, call it wrong monkey lex. Okay, so that's a, a, a lecture called monkey lex. Okay, that's a lecture called monkey lex. And here we have bill, we have a wrong. So let's do this one. If actually uh, underline, underline name, okay, underline, underline equals, uh, underline, underline name, okay. And we call uh, main function, okay. So here, let's actually put this one to define main function. And then we'll push the whole resource in over to here. Okay, so that will build and try. So this one is a separate monkey less function. So that's a save all. And that's if you look at this one. Okay, here I need to exit. Okay, here I need to exit. So I'm still in the demo 14. So I do on Python. Okay, so here I have the monkey next.py. And here actually do okay require an require an argument okay so I'm sorry here is the rule okay here different rule I will need to have self okay 
I need to have sale. I need to have sale. Okay, let me let me look at the this one real quick. Okay, so this version compared with the previous version. Okay, the class file, you do need to have self on each individual one. This is a big difference. Okay, each of the uh, each of the the rule. Okay, so you when you make it a class, you need to put your rule over here and the functional rule. You need to put the self over there. Okay, you need to put self over there. So let's save it one more time. So here let's do Python. Okay. I, I'm sorry, monkey, that's the PY. And you go to the here, one plus two, okay, times AAAA uh, divided by two, three, four, five, okay, return. So you will successfully tokenize them, okay, you successfully tokenize them and get out, okay. So this one is the third way to use it. So, so far we have the single file use, and then we have separate module use, and now we have class based design, okay. Let's look at the next one that's object based design, okay, object based design. So here again, let me actually save this uh, monkey dex one, okay. So we have monkey duo, long monkey, okay, Mon monkey, and we have monkey dex, that's actually using this one. We have monkey, that's actually a single file example, okay. So next one, let's actually look at object-based design, okay. So object-based design may be different from the class-based design, okay. So let's look at the object-based design. So object-based design. So when building the next from the class, you should construct a lecture from an instance of the class, okay? Not the class object itself. This is because a pre only work properly if the lecture action. So lecture is actually available, okay? It's a, available, available for a class. Okay, and the class have different function rules. So the lexer will be able to use the lexer, the, the different rule by defined by the same uh, lexer. Okay, so bam. So using the module uh, option to lex, okay, you collect symbol from the underlying in object. Okay, using the directory. Okay, so here. Okay, so we got that. Okay, so here you actually, if you want to uh, put it into the object director, okay, so here uh, you can also use object director. So we have the tokens, okay, tokens, and then we can define a function. So right here we have a function. So this is a function. This one is not a dual, okay. So this uh, outside uh, token, outside token. So here we have function. Function is a object uh, creator, okay, object creator. So we have the rule, okay, the outside we have the table of tokens, and then we have a rule as a function inside function, new line is a function inside function. So my next, my, this one, it is the, the this is a function, okay, so function by itself is a module. So you, that one, you call this one, so this one is actually is a function, and the function has a function, so it actually will, will get the input. Okay, get the input. So that one is an object. Okay, that is an object, and you will get the input. Input, you will process it. Okay, it, because this one actually, okay, this one in my next function, my next function, you will return a next that next. Okay, so this next that next is a function. Okay, so this uh my my next my next is a factory, function factory. It has no input, but you'll return a lecture for you. You'll return a lecture for you. So that, that object lecture, okay, that object lecture is a, a lecture generated by my dex function. So this one is a function, okay. And the token is using as a global variable for it, okay. The token is using a global for it. And then here you test it, you use the uh, this input, 
Okay, this one. So it's a lecture. So lecture also can get the input. So this one is a similar pre previous design. Okay. So that one is a class design. So this one is using a function as a function generator to create a uh, lesser object. Okay. And lesser object, uh, lesser object actually is what is the lesser that you created by the next the next function as the return value to the object uh, object here. Okay. And that one, so that's the object design. Important notice, if you are defining Nexer using a class or closure, uh, be aware that please still require you to define a single Nexer per module, okay? There are extensive validation or error checking part of the print, okay? Uh, which falsely uh, reporting error message if you don't follow the rule, okay? And maintaining the state, okay? In your lecture, you may want to maintain variety of state information. This might include in the mode setting, okay? So you may want to have some group available. If you have some counter you want to have, so you need to set that group available outside the function, okay? Okay, that's a maintaining the status. Okay, maintaining the status, you, you need to have some available. You need to maintain the value, okay, for the counter. Okay, this later approach had the advantage of being simple. So using function is actually simple and working correctly in application where multiple instantiation. So you can use that uh, uh, lesser, lesser generation to create uh, many, many uh, lesser, okay, in the, same bank, uh, in the same application. However, this might also feel like a gross violation or encapsulation of OOP, okay? So it actually is using object. It's using object, so you create multiple objects using the creation function, okay? And there's an input, okay? The input portion, when you run the reprint loop, reprint loop now, now is again, not related to the object anymore, okay? It's different from the class design. So, okay, you have my lecture, okay, this is a previous design. So if you don't assign a value to lesser object, you can define your lesser as a class as shown in the previous one. Okay, so you can use the, still use that. And you can use what object equals cell, okay, to build, okay. And uh, that one, you will create a object, okay. But the class approach may be easier to manage in your application if you are just creating uh, if you create, it's going to create multiple instances of the syntax and you need to manage a lot of state, okay? And state can be managed uh, through closures, okay? So it's a functional closure, but uh, if you have more of such a state you need to handle, the closure is difficult to do, okay? It's difficult to do. Um, in, if necessary, a lesser object can be duplicated by creating the log clone. Okay, clone function can make a multiple copy of it. When the lecture is cloned, the copy is exactly identical to the original one, including any input and the uh, in, internal state. However, the clone will have different set of input text to be supplied, which may be processed separately. Okay, this may be useful in situation when you write a parser compiler that in, involve recursion or re-entrant uh, the entrance uh, processing. For example, if you needed to scan ahead in the input for some reason, you can create Chrome and use it to look at. Or if you were implementing some kind of processor, uh, Chrome Lexer could be used to handle different input okay, files. So creating a Chrome is different from calling the next. So it's not the same, you actually clone in the lecture directly. It's not actually, uh, and that already have a rule. So it's different from regenerating uh, without, without any uh, table or regular uh, expression, okay? It, that not, in that actually, they are sharing the table. It's not deep cloning, okay? A uh, special consideration need to be made when closing lecture, so maintaining its own internal state, okay? So you actually, uh, you have the my lecture, okay? You can use an object, okay? To create the object, 
Okay, we uh, use object that you have a call that you have class, you create an object. Okay, you can also quick call the lecture and you actually uh, can clone the, uh, the create a lecture using that uh, function, okay, using that generation function. Okay, so this one is a little bit complicated. Okay, so then both, both the A, B are going to be bound to the same object. Okay, it's bound to the same object, it clone it. And uh, same object M, and uh, any change to M will reflect on both lexer. Okay, in this way, uh, this clone the lexer, but it's not the copy, so you will share some object that they uh, both have, okay. It's not click, Chrome is not deep copy, okay. So a lesser object, lesser has a number of internal attributes, okay. So these are extra less position, next line number, okay. Uh, lesser data, lesser match, okay. These are internal state. In the advanced passing application, it is useful to have different lesser state, okay. So class base maybe is better, okay. For instance, you may want to on the occurrence of a certain token or synthetical uh, construct to trigger different kind of lexing. Please support a feature that allow the underlying lexer to be put into a series of different states. Each state can have its own token, lexing rule and so forth, okay? So conditional lexing and the start condition. To define a new lexing state, it must first declare, be declared this is done by including a state declaration in your next file, for example, state like this, okay. Uh, the declaration declare to state, full and bar, okay. State may be of two type, inclusive or uh, inclusive, okay. This portion I think is more complicated, okay. And okay, an inclusive state completely override the typical behavior of the lexer. So I think this one is not that interesting. So let me see. It's conditional lexing and start condition. This one, I think when you need it, you can start it by yourself. Okay, this continual lexing is not that important. So here we have stay, okay, we have the lexer and we actually do conditional lexing. Okay, this one uh, have multiple issues. So. Uh, I don't think this portion, the conditional uh, lesson is that important. So let's go back to the object-based design first, okay? Object-based design first. So let's actually go back to my example. We have a monkey language. So here, let's create one more file called uh, monkey, okay, monkey obj.py. Okay, let's create this one. So here, I still need to actually import, okay? Uh, pre the uh, next okay as uh, as next okay we still need to import this one so now I here I actually define okay uh, make okay that's a good the other something called make monkey okay so make monkey is a function that I create instead of using the one they say okay uh, I don't use the one called my lecture to and that will confuse you okay because the, my lecture look like is similar to the similar to the class design. Okay, so here I do use the uh, do use make monkey. Okay, make monkey. So now I'm going to put my monkey table to it. So here let me actually put my monkey token table to it. Okay, so the first thing that I do is put my monkey table to it. Okay, so this one should be outside token table of the monkey uh, language to put over here, okay? So now I have a define monkey, and then uh, next one. Next one, all of the rules should be defined inside the uh, monkey function, okay? So every single rule need to be defined inside the monkey uh, function. You set up at the very end, you return the next that next, okay? You, everybody and you return the next time next. So right here, I'm going to uh, get other rule, the regular expression rule, everything to the end, including the error. Let me actually get this one. Let me go to the put into my monkey object over here. Okay, so right here, I'm putting it over here and control V, okay. So here, this one, after second line to the end of the file, this one, I'm going to tap it. Uh, 
So this one a line, okay? And this main monkey at the very end, I'm going to actually return the function next to next, okay? That will create uh, the next, okay? So right here after that, let's look at it. You have the object, okay, object, uh, this one. So that actually get my, get my wrongner, okay. So I get my wrongner, okay. So get this wrongner, okay. Get this a repeat console. Get this a repeat console put into my uh, monkey object over here, okay. So right here we have this, but we before we actually run it, okay. You need to make an object, okay. So here we will do uh, monkey equals uh, make uh, monkey. So make monkey will actually create a monkey, okay. So let's call this one monkey dex, okay. Monkey dex. So let's call this guy monkey dex. So monkey dex. Okay, it's my lexer, so monkey dex input. Okay, so here in monkey dex. Okay, monkey dex is my lexer. Okay, so just doing this, I am okay. Here, I don't need this one. Okay, so this one I change it into my object style design for my. Uh, let's say, so here let's do Python, okay. Python, and then let me do monkey object.py, okay. And we do one plus two, three, okay. times four, okay. Plus a, 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 and we can do tokenization and we get out, okay. So, so far we introduced four different design style, okay? Number one, you have a single file design. You put your table over here, put your rule over here, you make your lecture, okay? And you put your replay over here, okay? That's the first style, we use a simple file, single file. Second one, you actually, uh, second one you actually put into the, the dual file, okay, and you have a separate longer file. So one, you actually have a uh, a class, okay, and in the class you actually put your dual and your your table and dual over there, and you need to actually uh, create a bo function and a wrong function for it, okay. And the last one actually you create a a uh, function factory that will generate your lexer and then you put your reprint after it, okay? You create a lexer and use your reprint after it. So these are the four different way you can use your, uh, your, your pre to create a lexer and also same thing for the parser as well, okay? And in the middle, I skip some portion for the so-called conditional, the so-called conditional uh, lesson. Okay, conditional lesson, I think uh, if you are interested, you can look into that, okay? But that portion I think is a little bit away from our main uh, interest of uh, looking into the physical analysis and passing, okay? This one, um, some extra material, okay? If you are interested, you can look into that, okay? Session six, passing basic. We have finished the tokenization. Now let's look at the passing. So py is used to pass language syntax. And as we mentioned before, it is using the SR grammar rules and you are using the extended uh, back snow form to uh, do it. So each production rule, you can write it down in this way. So you have expression produce, expression plus turn, or expression minus turn, and turn, expression can also be a turn. 
And turn can be turn times factor or turn divided by factor or a factor itself. A factor can be a number or parenthesis with expression. So these two rules, I think we looked at it before. And you can write this one down in this format. Okay, this actually is what the, this is what the uh, pre, okay, the, the Python that yet uh, will accept for passing. Okay, so in the grammar, the simple, Simple are as number plus minus times and division are known as the terminals, okay? Uh, and the corresponding to an input token, identifiers such as term factor refer to the non-terminals, okay? And the semantic behavior of a language is often specified as a technique known as the, as the syntax directed translation, SDL, okay? We talk about this in, uh, the, in the lecture 13, okay, in, uh, we talk about this in lecture uh, 12 and 13. In syntax directed translation, there are two kinds of attribute, S attribute and L attribute, okay. Attributes are attached to each symbol uh, as the attribute grammar, okay. So in the grammar rule along with uh, action. So here we are using the SR table and also we are uh, using the attribute grammar. Uh, whenever a particular grammar rule is recognized, the action describing uh, what to do, for example, given the expression grammar above, we are talking about this calculator uh, language. So the syntax that is on left hand side is content free grammar, the right hand side is action attribute. So you do have the, this one we call it what? This one we call it the S attribute. So your expression zero equals expression one, and then plus turn the value. So turn expression one, expression zero. Okay, this is the grammar. So we have this action rule. It's okay. You can look at it. And uh, uh, only this uh, lexical value will be converted to the factor's uh, value. This one is a terminal. Okay, this one is terminal. If the uh, types number a number we actually last time we talked about it already in the our next uh, table we do have the number okay we do have a number rule and it will return the value okay the value will be uh, returned over here so that would be a factor value other than that everything is expression or uh, factor or turn okay and you have this different things so these are the parser basic rule a good way to think about syntax directed translation is to view each symbol in the grammar as some kind of object okay we talk about it already it actually it's an object it's a node in the syntax tree with many attributes and the attributes are the uh, data fields okay yes use parsing technique called lr passing so okay? it actually is lr passing okay and LR passing is button up technique, okay, that uh, try to recognize the right hand side of uh, various uh, grammar. Whenever a very uh, valid uh, right hand side is found in the input, the, the appropriate action call is trigger, is trigger, and the grammar symbol is replaced by the symbol uh, on the left hand side, okay, so you actually can produce. And LR passing is commonly implemented by shifting grammar symbol on two states. So this one we talked about it already, the LR passing uh, with the table and action. We, we talk about it uh, in lecture 13, uh, in lecture 12, okay, in lecture 12. And looking at the uh, state and the next input token for pattern that match one of the grammar rules. The detail of the algorithm can be found in the compiler textbook. But the following example illustrated the steps that are performed if you wanted to pass the expression this, okay? And the symbol representing the end of the input, okay? The start sign is the turn termination of the state, okay? So right here, we start to have input token like this, okay? We insert the star data sign at the end. So the right hand side is the action that we take. So you push the three into there, okay? And it will be matched by the factor rule. So this one is a ship, reduce ship, reduce ship uh, using the S, uh, LR table, okay, we talked about it before, so it goes through this. And this whole scene actually is the output of the passing, okay, output of passing will give you this, okay. So when passing the expression, the underlying state machine and current input token determine what happened next, okay. If the next token look like part of the very grammar, 
it generally ship onto the stack. If the top of the stack contain a very right hand side grammar rule, it will usually reduce. So that means that the whole scene combined to reduce to a left hand side symbol, okay, and trigger the value evaluation. The token cannot be shipped to the top of the stack and does not match any grammar rule, a syntax error will be generated. A parse is only successful if the pass reach the end of the step, okay, the end of the token read, okay. So it's important to know that the underlying implementation is built around large finite state machine that is encoded in the collection of tables. The construction of these tables are, uh, is non-trivial and beyond the scope of this discussion. However, subtle detail of this process is explain why. In the example above, okay, so here's okay, we actually, uh, look at the yet. Okay, so here just telling you uh, we use the uh, LR passing, and the syntax rule is the one that we actually talk about in the lecture 13. Okay. And here we uh, talk about yet. Yet is yet another compiler compiler. Okay. It's the name come from here. Suppose you wanted to make a grammar of a simple arithmetic expression. Okay. You can do it with yak plus py. So basically, you import a pre dot yak, okay, as yak. So yak is a generator of the parser, okay. And you from your uh, next third file uh, create a token. We just need a token, okay. We just need a token. So we had an expression plus duo, okay. The that's actually your production duo. Production duo is p underline. That's a default name, okay. It will match for this duo. This duo is a Baker's Snow form uh, written as the content-free uh, grammar. So here you have different form to match it. So duo we introduced already, and the evaluation. So uh, the the string, the string is actually the the content-free grammar. The 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 variable are actually the so called uh, the so called uh, available are the so called uh, action rule and p is actually a a production rule multiple tuple okay it actually if they are three tuple and it match it uh, the left hand side p zero will be assigned by this okay so this we know okay the different rule we know and Error is a production, actually it's an error, no one match, or no one match, you would say is actually syntax error, okay? And you can build a parser by yy next, okay? And you while true, okay, you actually create your input, okay? Input is your, uh, input is your, just getting a string, okay, getting a string. Getting a string that actually is a string, if there's no more string or the file ended, uh, you would, one, ah, you will break or you will not going to do it. Otherwise you pass the string, you pass the string to uh, the parser and parser will print the result. Okay, parser will print the result. So this is a pretty simple way to run it. So here this S can also be line by line. If this is a line input, you can also use that to do line by line passing. Okay, you can do line by line passing. We will rewrite it later. Okay, we will rewrite it later. So basically, each duo you have p zero that's the left hand side, and then there is uh, p one, p two, and p three. You are matching the expression by this. Okay, and the function name you can name it as a p uh, uh, any name you like. Okay, and that just will match the duo. Okay, so inside your inside your function here, you actually build your p underlying function the year function will uh, take it, okay? The year function will take it. So, okay, an example, for tokens, the value of the corresponding PI is the same as the PTA value attribute, okay, in the lesser uh, module, okay? So in the lesser module for non-terminal, the value is determined by whatever is present, P0 will need to reduce, okay? So it's actually, it's like S rule, okay? Button up rule. Uh, the, the value can be anything at all. However, it probably and most uh, it probably most common for the value to be a simple Python type tuple, for example. In this example, we rely on the fact that the number token store an integer value in its data field. All the other dual perform 
various type of integer operation propagate the result, okay? And the use of negative indices for special meaning, okay? So does not have the same as a P3 in the example, so do not use it, okay? It's for embedded action. So the first uh, rule defined in the EX specification determine the starting grammar simple, okay? Uh, whenever the starting rule is reduced by the parser and the no more input is available, parsing stop and the final value is returned, okay? So the P error rule is that to catch, it's defined to catch some syntax error if there is no rule can match it, okay? To be a parser, you call the yyy.yek, okay? The function loop at the module and attempt to construct a LR parsing table for a grammar you specify, okay? And any error detected in your grammar specification, yy.py will produce diagnostic uh, 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 message, okay? And will raise an exception, okay? And some of the error that can be detected in including duplicate function name should reduce errors that is specified the uh, grammar, grammar rule wrong, okay? And also infinite recursion on um, uh, that lib recursion, for example. Uh, but here we have LR grammar, so it won't happen. And use dual or token, undefined dual or token. The next few section discussion the grammar specification in more detail. So at this moment, we look at example, the final part of the example show how actually wrong the parser created by yet. Okay, to run the parser, you have to call the parse function uh, with an input string, okay? And you will run all the, uh, all the grammar rule, okay? And get the result in P0, okay? And something like that. So here we have different rule, okay? We have different rule. So let's actually look at the example, okay? Let's look at the example. This one, I'm going to uh, actually go into my directory, there is a, in your lecture 14 is a parser one. So let's actually change to the parser one uh, folder. You should see the file. So let me actually open folder, okay? So I'm going to go to my parser one. So lecture 14, parser one. So select this folder, okay? So right there, you should see a parser basic, okay? So parser basic is a basic file. So this one actually, it get the, the dual, the, the token from the KL, KLX, okay? So in this one, uh, the token is used, okay? This one token is used. So it create a lexer, but okay, let it create a lexer in here, but uh, the token being ported here. So the lexer is not needed in here, okay? So right here, let's see, you do everything and you have a yet and while well true, you do this, okay? So right here, let's actually uh, try, okay, let's try. Try to use the terminal to run it, okay? Let's see how it works. So new terminal, we do Python, okay? Here we have a parser, a basic.py, so we run this one, okay? Uh, it actually do passing, okay, it do passing. So you have, uh, it actually pass the PY and what is that? It actually it do lexical analysis, okay? So what is that actually, uh, when you when you port, when you import your import, uh, when you port your uh, kill, kill next, okay? It already run the function or the tokens, okay? So you get this whole thing, okay? That is three plus something, okay? So that module actually need to be uh, a little bit changed, okay? But anyway, that's not related to what we want to pass right here. So that actually look at this one, we will rewrite it, okay? So basically right here, we have the input, okay? And then every time we read in a string, okay? We'll pass that one to my parser, okay? So let's actually do this one. So here I'm going to do uh, one plus two, okay, we barely get three, four plus five, okay, times two, we get 18. Okay, nine times, so something like that. So we do control G, we'll get out of the parser. So that's what it is, okay? So right now we are going to rewrite this thing, okay? We, write, we are going to rewrite this thing. 
So let's actually, uh, let's do this. Okay, let's actually do, let me actually open my previous folder in my demo file, okay? In my demo file, I'm going to open this one, my demo 14, okay? So here, go back to my KO2, okay, KO2, okay. Uh, and my KO2, so my KO2 actually is this one, okay? My KO2 is my second version of the function, okay? Uh, it, it will build a lexer and then some data being used. So it used the KO1, okay? Uh, the one is actually here, the KO1. So that actually right now, let me actually try to modify it a little bit, okay? And I'm going to go to the, my, my uh, lecture 14 right here. Okay? Let me go to parser. So let me bring up this one called basic parser. Let me open by this one, okay? So I'm going to copy this one, okay? So I'm actually going to copy this one. Instead of calling it basic parser, I'm going to call it what? I'm going to call it, uh, a parser one, the P1. Okay, I'm going to call it parser one, the P1. So I'm going to pass my call, okay, over here. Okay, I'm going to pass my call over here. So here I have my uh, calculator two, okay. Here I have my calculator two. So right here, I'm going to uh, put this one into a, a main function. Put this one into the main function. Okay, and we actually do if okay, other than I other than name, okay, other than under nine equals uh, main, so it become a self test. Okay, we run main function. So when we import, it will not actually uh, import the uh, unnecessary stuff. Okay, it will not import the unnecessary stuff. So here we have this parser. So this parser, we actually here, let me import the KL2, okay, and get a token from the calculator two, okay. So this one, we get this one. And here we create a parser while two, we do this one, okay. So it actually is a uh, while two, we will do it, okay. And it is not a, a, a S um, we are going to get out. So here I'm going to do this one, I'm going to do time equals ah, both, okay. So here I'm going to do this one. I'm going to do while not done, okay? So while not done, I'm going to do this one. I'm sorry, here actually while not S, I'm going to do this one. So I'm going to put my, uh, this one, let me see, it's okay, end of file, okay? So it has an end of file issue, okay? It has an end of file issue, for, but for this, for the time being, that actually don't, care about it, okay, we will have a care. So this one, I'm going to use it for the console mode, okay, so I'm going to put it here. So this one, I'm okay. Uh, while uh, S, okay, while S has some value, we'll go into here, okay. Okay, so here we are going to do this one. So we have S, we are going to do this one and we print the result and then we are going to uh, put this, okay, put this, put it over here, <clears throat> okay. And this one actually is my string, okay, while S, okay. So let's actually do this one, uh, actually do the lower, okay. Uh, actually not equals, okay, ESIT. So when S it will get out, okay, otherwise the string will be put into the parser and we are going to pass it, okay? So this one is the reflex format by doing this one, okay? This one actually is a reflex format. We actually will do this one in reflex mode. This one is my parser one, okay? So let me set all, and let me uh, create a new terminal. So here I run Python, okay? And I will have my uh, PAR, okay? The name is wrong, okay? Let me rename it, okay? So rename it is called PAR. I have a typo, okay, parser one, okay. So here, let me call it parser one, the py. Okay, so it actually going into uh, my 
uh, my function here. Okay, so I have one plus two. That is trespass. So actually, there's no lexer. Okay, there's no lexer. So right here, something went wrong. Okay, it actually does not get the rule. Okay, so right here, the lexer must be wrong. Okay, so you want to build a lexer. So go back to lexer two. Okay. So right here, if you use is main module, you build a lesson. So that's actually copy this one, okay? Don't put it in there. That's actually do put into my parser one, okay? Before my, I have here. So let me actually put it over here, okay? Uh, let me see, I'm sorry. Let me actually do uh, put it over here. So I have my lecture wrong okay so my, i have my laser to be wrong uh let me see let me see let me change my mind okay i will change my mind so here let me uh, cut this one okay so here i go back to my list okay so here this one i have my main function so i will love my lecture to be pure okay so let me cut this one put the lecture available here okay so main function actually is only doing in the reflex, reflex portion, okay? Let me actually only run the reflex portion, okay? And then next uh, will be automatic B or based on the module. So whenever you uh, pull, uh, import that, uh, uh, this one, it will run it, okay? So let me actually save all, okay, save all. Let's do one more time, so passing. Uh, parser and the py. Okay. One plus two, so it gets three, okay? So the key point is that you must run the lexer once. So this one, you actually define the rule and the function. So it is still needed, okay? It's still needed, it's still, it's still needed. This whole thing is still needed. You must have the lexer over there, okay? And then uh, you do your main function. So that's actually try another one. Here I will do exit uh, get out of my code. Okay. So here let me actually do Python my calculator calculator lecture two the py. Let me run this one one more time. And this one has had a one plus two. Okay, times four. So generally the next thing uh, result. So it's still working, okay? My calculator too is still working to get out, okay? So this is a way that actually I, I generate the parser one. So parser one actually is importing the calculator two from uh, and, and the module, okay? And I define this over here. So let me actually try another one. Here I'm going to design something called parser two, okay? Pass to the py, I put it over here. Let me get my calculator to portion. So here, let me grab everything. So this is my next portion. Okay, so this one is my next portion. Next portion, I put into my here. Okay, so here actually. Okay, this is the next portion. So next portion, you you have your lecture based on this different rule, okay? Then, then you actually have your parser, okay? So parser, I get it from parser number one. So I'm going to get everything, okay, over, okay? And put it under here. It said that, it said that now I do not need to use the one, this one uh, yet still needed, okay? Here, I do not you need to get the token from the other one. I can use the current one. So here, let me actually cut this portion to up. So I incorporate my next and yet together. Okay, so this portion, uh, next. Uh, so this is our next definition, okay? So this portion is next definition. Okay, so let me actually cut this bio lexer down. Okay. Put it before my parser. So by build a lecture and then build a parser. Okay. So next to it. So here, let me actually, uh, here, I'm actually, this one is actually is the, my parser uh, definition. 
So I have a section of the lexer definition and a lexer uh, a section of parser definition. So here lexer definition up to here, okay, for all the duo and the tokens, okay, and I and I'll build my lexer, okay, and then I would have my all of my uh, parser duos, okay, and I would uh, build my parser. After that, I create my own simple reprint. Build my own simple replay console. Okay, so oh, so right here that's strong Python. Okay, and parser two the py. Okay, I have one plus two. Okay, times three divided by four. Okay, so we get some result. Okay, we say something to this. So three times three is nine. Nine divided by four, you get two point two five. Okay. And you can get out of your uh, reprint. Okay, you can get out of your reprint. So this one is a reprint, and it's a simple, simple calculator uh, using the pre, uh, next and yet. Okay, and the next uh, definition over here. Okay, parser definition over here, and we use the knowledge we have so far to build a simple, simple calculator. Okay, now let's actually develop this uh, parser into file more okay into the file more so let's assume that we want to uh, define it into the file more okay and um, let's assume that here we have a file okay so here we have data that uh text okay so let's assume that we would do one plus two okay uh, divided by four okay we have uh one uh, one times four plus nine, okay, divided by three, okay, we have 10 times 24, okay. Let's assume that we have such a data file, okay, such a data file. So that's actually copy this, uh, the so called, uh, the so called uh, parser two into another one called parser. Parser three, okay. So this one is a file-based design. So let's actually do this one. Uh, we create the we create the parser and the uh, and the parser parser and the next. Okay, here we have a file more. So we have a file equals open of my data the text. Okay, and then for reading. Okay, elevate my file need to be closed, okay, need to be closed. Okay, so every time I'm not going to use the prompt, I'm going to do f that read line. Okay. So f that read line, we will do f that read line. Here we won't use the exit. We will use uh, actually uh, while s is something, we still have some data, okay. And the one more, you don't do that, you do F that read line. So you will read different line and then keep passing, okay? So here is down equal force, it's not needed, okay? I go back to number two, parser number two, the down equal force also not needed, okay? That's it, we hold that. So that's actually save all, go back to parser three, okay? So this one, open file, read line, uh, if it's not empty, we pass it, okay? Okay, so here that's read line and do a string. Okay, and then do, okay, do strip. Okay, that is also do strip. So strip out the uh, uh, change line mark. Okay, so let's actually save it. Okay, save it. Okay, let's try this one. So we have Python, okay. And then we have parser three at py, okay. Parser three to py. Run, okay, so we get three data from the data. Okay, so this one is a file more. We can actually design the argument list. So you actually can run the uh, program okay we can you design the part but here i just show you a simple way to combine the next and parser together 
into a file more, okay? Into a file more. So this one is the dexter and parser we have. So that's that. We actually finished that, okay? <clears throat> So here, let's continue, okay, continue. So we have this kind of, uh, example, and we get this duos, okay, and you can combine the grammar duo, okay, uh, the plus duo, that's one function. You can combine two duo and into one function. It will check uh, to the plus sign or minus sign, and then it's both are evaluating the expression, okay? And you can combine the expression duo and also the turn duo together, okay? And then you can also combine the expression equals expression minus expression or only minus expression, single minus expression, you can also, okay, okay. So this one uh, is one you can do. So combining the grammar rule is also uh, very good, okay. You can combine it. The passing performance is a concern. You should resist to the urge to put too much conditional processing into a single grammar, okay. So that actually will slow down because you compare two more, okay. When you add a check to see if the grammar rule is being handled, you actually duplicate the work the parser already performed, okay. You can email this overhead by using the separate uh, parser rules, okay. So here we have binary operator, we actually put this one, okay. Uh, a grammar can contain the token defined in a single character uh, literal. For example, you have this, okay. And, okay. <clears throat> and character literal, a character literal, okay, here it is a single character. You can put a single letter literal instead of an extra token called plus or minus, okay. So single letter will probably easier to uh, handle, okay. So that is a good question. And character literal can be enclosed. Okay, so you put a literal, okay. And literal should be placed in the module given to lexer. Okay, so literal should be put into the lexer. So you can uh, check these other literals, okay. And then you check the production rule is empty, okay. And uh, optimize, okay. These are something you can check, okay. Changing the starting symbol, your starting symbol is full, okay. Your rule is bar, you generate A, B, okay. You full, you generate bar and X. So normally the first rule found here is define the starting symbol of the grammar rule, okay, usually. And you that, but you can also define your own starting rule to check, okay. Now you can change the starting symbol to check. You can also assign the star equals the full the starting symbol. Okay, starting rule you want to check, okay. Again, you can deal with the ambiguity, okay. So this portion, I'm going to just skip it because there are too much detail. So this portion, I'm going to just skip it, okay. And because this is already a very long lecture, so uh, just go through the simple part. And if you are interested in this, uh, extra material, you can go through it, okay? Now, uh, one more thing is that you have a parser design, okay? And then you can use a debug equal true, okay? And then uh, you will actually generate some output, okay? Generate some output. And then you create these different things, okay? You will create uh, these different things. Okay, so let's actually check this one. Okay, check this one. Let me actually create, go back. Okay, let me go back to here. Okay, uh, instead of using parsing parser three, let me use a parser, uh, let me use a parser two, okay? Uh, let me use a parser three first, okay? So let me actually use parser three. Let me actually copy. Okay. So I'm going to create another one. This one, let me call it uh, parser or the PY, okay? So let me put it over here. 
instead of opening the data here, I'm going to open data two, okay? So data two, I will simplify it. So data, I'm going to copy this file, okay? Pass us, okay, let me copy this file, copy. And I'm going to actually, uh, actually, I'm going to pass us. So I'm going to copy pass us, uh, actually data two, okay, and pass it to data two. So this data two, I'm going to just keep the first, first one, okay? I'm just going to keep the first one. So I'm going to save, okay? And in my password four, okay, I use a data two and right here, I, I create a password yet, okay, here, I'm going to do debug, okay? Debug equal true. So I'm going to turn on the debug mode for this one, okay? So let me actually set all, okay? So here I have Python, okay? Uh, parser for the py, okay? I'm sorry, Python, okay? Parser for the py. Okay, got the 0.75, okay, so here let me do Python parser for the py go to uh, actually, uh, uh, okay, I'm sorry, here let me do parser for the py, uh, the output go to the data, okay, to report that text. Okay. So here we get something. So we, we get a date report in the data too. Okay, we get the output. Now let's look at it. Let's look at it. Here actually parser design, you can use debug equals true, okay? The content of the file, okay? Uh, to assist in uh, parsing, you can actually create a debug file called parser.out, okay? Parser.out, so let's actually look at it. Uh, here we get the parser that out. So parser that out actually uh, is the one that we get. Okay, is the one that we get. Okay, so this one is the one that we get. So let's see. In the middle, we actually started from state, and you go through the parser's report. Okay, so this one is a detailed parser report. Uh, we get okay. We get when we do passing, okay. When we do passing, we get this uh, password that we call, okay. Uh, password out, we get this password out. So, different password you may like to, different password wrong, you may like to use a different directory so you can uh, look at the password report one, okay. Which one you pass and how it work, okay. So, you can turn on the debug. So, this is a debug one. This one is right now, I'm only using the parser 4 to generate. Only parser 4 has the debug mode, okay? And it generates a simple output, okay? Simple output, of, uh, I'm sorry, data to only 1 plus 2 divided by 4, okay? 1 plus 2 divided by 4, so that actually is uh, the, the whole thing, okay? So that's the whole thing, so actually, we apply the different rule over, okay? And this also, these are the different rule uh, by the uh, rule, okay? And the tokens, so these are the token ID, okay? So, and we start to evaluate it, okay? So the token process, <clears throat> the process that we run the tokens, okay? That's in the so-called debug uh, pass it the output, okay? So here these are some results for certain run. We are not going to go into the detail. There's a parser that out, okay? The different state appear in this file are uh, representation of every possible sequence of the very input token allowed by the grammar, okay? So basically it goes through the different uh, running and using different rules. So it's a lot of very detail. If you are interested, you can go to look at that report file, okay? You can go to that report file. Okay, here there are certain, uh, some more detailed things we are not going to cover, okay? So basically let's go to the object syntax tree, okay? So the object syntax tree construction, 
uh, yet provide a special function constructing an abstract syntax tree. However, such construction is easy enough to do on your own, okay? A minimal way to construct a tree is to create and propagate tuple or, or list in each grammar of the function, okay? So you can actually create a tree, okay? So you can, here you have the expression rule for a binary operator, okay? So you have this different rule, okay? So here you can use a tuple. You can also assign this one to your P0, okay? If you don't want to just uh, evaluate, so you can usually construct a tree with the by uh, with each node, okay? You can do this one, okay? You can construct your ST. If you don't want to do evaluation right away, you can build up your own tree. When you go to a tree node, your left-hand side will become the that, okay? And, and that actually, okay, that actually is what you have, okay? Okay, so that one actually you can put into more scene, okay? And then as you can create your ST, okay? And you cre can create your own node, okay? Create your own node with that, okay? <clears throat> okay, so that one is you, you want to build your own uh, ST, you can do that, okay? And you can have multiple uh, parser and multiple lecture in the, in the same uh, program, okay? So here is, oh, oh, again, this one is an optional item you can, Look at it, and you can also assign your own uh, lecture before you do pass it. Okay, you can assign that as well. So this portion are more advanced topic, so we are going to skip them. Okay, we're going to skip them. So using Python in dash double O more. Okay, because pre uh, reliance uh, uh, need a lot of the uh, duck common stream. Okay, it's not compatible with dash OO, so basically you cannot run Python with dash OO, then the document stream will not support the print, okay? So that one, you should not do it, okay? Okay, so the example directly on the print distribute can serve several examples, so you can also look at uh, where you actually uh, install your print, okay? You can also look at it. Um, also, you can look into a compiler theory. So here, we just give you a brief introduction of uh, how to construct a lecture. So we give you four style of the lecture, okay? And here, parser, we also sit up, uh, go through some simple parsers, okay? You can study it, okay? So this is the end of my lecture 14, chapter 10A. Chapter 10 is on the integration of parser and lecture. Thank you, bye now.